It's a catastrophe far worse than the Exxon Valdez disaster. Right now, a crippled underground well is spewing millions upon millions of litres of crude oil into the Mexican Gulf, and no one seems able to stop it. I've just been to Louisiana, the American state that's copped the worst of the spill, and what's happening there is absolutely heartbreaking. It just shows what happens when companies put profits before people and places. We're heading where very few people have been allowed. All right, we're stuck number two. To the epicenter of one of the worst man-made environmental disasters in history. US Coast Guard has given us exclusive access. Only emergency crews have been this deep inside the oil spill exclusion zone, more than a hundred kilometers off Louisiana, in the Gulf of Mexico. It's incredible to be at this place right now. This is the actual source of the oil spill, the beginning of the catastrophe. These rigs right now are working furiously to try and drill deep and intercept that ruptured pipeline. It's just incredible. It's an overwhelming in scale. You can smell the oil. It's so strong and it stings your eyes. And when you look down, you can see the red rusty oil glob sitting on the surface and a sheen that stretches as far as the eye can see. Out here, the sheer scale of the catastrophe is overwhelming. We followed rivers of oil back toward the coastline, some 30 kilometres long, moving with the fast-flowing Gulf currents. Some experts say 16 million litres of oil is billowing into the sea each day. When you get down onto the surface and you get up close to this oil slick, you see just what a crisis it is. Let me take a sample and try and show you. That is pure crude oil. It's toxic sludge and it has the consistency of thick, melted tar. It would seem that it's almost impossible to clean this stuff from the shorelines. On shore, it's been a slow motion disaster, and only this past week have the first waves of oil hit the mainland, with all their terrible consequences. Sea life has been devastated. Birds and fish lay dying over a wide area. Can they fix it? Maybe in 30 years? Good luck! They've murdered the Gulf! Kendra Arneson is one of thousands of locals whose lives face ruin. OK, jump on. Why don't you show me on board? Yeah, come on. Her family oh, has fished these waters for two decades. Now, their shrimping boat lies idle. More than 22,000 square kilometres of America's most fertile fishing grounds have been closed. It's a way of life that's been ruined. It is a way of life that's been ruined. They've killed a food source. Great. It's Gulf produces the best tasting seafood you'll ever eat. Used to. Well, used to. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Used to. Once upon a time. I guess it'll be something in history. That's sad. That's heartbreaking. It's disgusting. It was April 20 when the oil line at BP's Deepwater Horizon ruptured and exploded causing the rig on the surface to burst into balls of flame. Eleven workers were killed, 17 injured. And two days later, the platform collapsed and sank, leaving the broken pipe on the sea floor spewing oil. This is the boat right here, if you want to jump aboard. This is the one you're on? Yeah, if I'd like to, thank you. Come on. Remarkably, that hey, night, fishing buddies, Albert, Wes, Dustin and Ryan, were moored right beneath that enormous platform was their favourite spot, the yellow thin tube. There was this loud hissing noise. That kind of sound was really loud. It was so loud where we couldn't even really talk to each other, couldn't hear each other. It was like a freight train. And it was just, it 
loud. You, we could feel it. We could feel the heat. The explosion was just tremendous. The boys knew they had to get out of there fast. As soon as he saw it, he started saying, go, 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 go. And he meant it. You know, he, he, I, everybody knew it was serious. And the only thing we did was uh, forward these two throttles and went straight out as far as we could go. As they sped away, they grabbed the video camera and started rolling. Holy shit, dude. Look at the water on fire. I thought everybody was dead. I didn't think anybody yeah, there was I mean, survived. The whole, the whole thing, rig thing was all lame, you know? Incredibly, 115 rig workers did survive. Among them, Chief Electronics Technician Mike Williams, in charge of the rig's computers and electrical systems. I heard this awful hissing noise, this and at the height of the hiss, a huge explosion. Uh, it just take your breath away type explosions, shake your body to the core explosions. Um, take your vision away from the percussion of the explosion. It was chaos. All safety procedures went to hell. The lifeboats had been launched, leaving Mike and many others behind. He made a split-second decision to jump from the burning 10-story rig. I remember closing my eyes and, and saying a prayer and uh, <clears throat> asking God to tell my wife, little oh, girl, that uh, Daddy did everything he could. I made those three steps. I pushed off into the rig. And I fell for what seemed like forever. A lot of things go through your mind. Deepwater Horizon was BP's crowning glory in the Gulf. The $400 million operation had drilled deeper than any oil rig in history. 10 kilometers straight down. And not a single worker had been injured in seven years. But there were problems and a lot of pressure from management. You always kind of knew that in the back of your mind when they start throwing these big numbers around that th there was going to be a push coming, you know, a push to, to, to pick up production, pick up the pace. Critically, three weeks before the explosion, a crewman's mistake damaged a crucial safety seal on a device known as the blowout preventer, designed to stop an explosion. The problem was discussed at a safety meeting on board Deepwater Horizon. Mike Williams says the rig's owner, Transocean, suggested a temporary shutdown. But BP, which owns the oil, demanded drilling continue. I had the BP company man sitting directly beside me, and he, he literally perked up and said, well, my, my process is different, and I think we're going to do it this way. So there was sort of a, a chest bumping kind of deal. The communication seemed to really break down as to who was ultimately in charge. The repair operation and BP's failure to shut down have become key to the disaster investigation. But meanwhile, live cameras on the ocean floor show the ferocity of the ongoing leak. Let me show you something over here, because beneath this net is where I think the oil catastrophe becomes quite upsetting. Just have a look under here. We'll do it gently and quietly. Under there a 28 pelican soaked in that toxic oil. Now, they think they'll save most of them. They're going to get underway cleaning them in just a few hours. But if this is what's happening to the wildlife on the shoreline, it's unbearable to think what's happening right now to the marine life beneath the sea. This is a really a man-made catastrophe. I mean, this is like the scale of hurricane, but it's an oil spill. Weaving through the maze of marshlands at the mouth of the Mississippi River, it doesn't take long to discover more oil pollution. Look at this, it just 
Run your hand up all these reeds. That's what comes off. The slick has rippled through these sensitive wetlands, leaving its black mark. A toxic tide line that's strangling these plants. Look at it all the way through, as far as you can see. Yeah. It's strong too, isn't it? You can really smell that oil. Oh, yeah. Oof. Fumes. It's so yeah, strong. Well. Biologist Dr. Ricky Ott is a world expert in marine pollution. She saw firsthand, 21 years ago, how massive oil spills impact communities. Ricky was working in Alaska when the Exxon Valdez disaster struck. And even today, that pristine waterway has not fully recovered. What we have is an ecosystem that's still recovering, and the scientists are saying it's going to be another 50 years minimum before that oil goes away. Exxon was considered the worst ecological disaster of its time. But already, even by BP's own estimates, this is 10 times worse. And the numbers here are rising every day. We have our priorities kind of wrong in this country. And we were left wondering, who rules? Is it we the people or is it we the corporation? The American public says, no, no more dead dolphins, no more dead sea turtles, no more sick people, no more cultures destroyed, enough already of oil. We can make 100% of our income. That has nothing to do with the federal government. This community is certainly saying enough. Kendra Arneson has become a crusader, the Erin Brockovich of Venice, Louisiana. A straight talking settler, not afraid to stand up to big oil and big government. Everything is dying. It's either dying or dead. They can't fix this. Everybody, we gotta get out of fist match and get everybody on the same page. If that doesn't happen, this is gonna affect the entire world. Some locals are trying to get the job done. Unable to fish, they're now paid by BP to scoop up oil. Proud fishermen suffering the indignation of working for the company that's wrecked their livelihoods. And their paychecks now come from this man. To those affected in your families, I'm deeply sorry. Tony Hayward is the British boss of BP and the lightning rod for so much American anger right now. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. I'd like my life back. Me too, me too. I'd love my life back. My restaurant remains closed because I don't have time for my business right now. Because I have to take care of Tony Hayward's business because he can't take care of it himself. My heart says uh, that I'd like to spit in Tony Hayward's face. To be perfectly honest with you, he disgusts me. The cleanup will take years, and BP has accepted full responsibility. So far, it's cost them one and a half billion dollars. Their headlong pursuit of profit now has them hemorrhaging money as fast as the oil gushing from their ruptured pipeline. But don't expect sympathy from anyone around here. And now their their stocks are plummeting. Oh, you want a towel to cry on? Maybe you should use the one that's soaked with my tea. 